Today, we're going to compare VGT and XLK. Probably the two best technology ETFs around, these two monsters achieved better returns than QQQ in the last 10 years and positioned themselves as the main reference for investors focused on technology. VGT is the Vanguard Information Technology ETF, one of the most diverse market cap weighted technology ETFs. XLK is the Technology Select Sector Spider ETF, with a great performance but less diversification than VGT. I was asked by a subscriber called Tushant to make this comparison, following my series of comparison videos that you can find in my channel page. So if you enjoy this kind of videos or have any wish, let me know in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more investing videos. My name is Rick, investor and Italian twin of Mano Ginobili, and this is the final comparison between VGT and XLK. We're going to start, as always, from the strategy of these two ETFs and their indexes. VGT is one of the most diversified market cap weighted tech ETFs. With 318 holdings, it gives you wonderful coverage of the whole tech industry, tracking an index made up of stocks of large, mid-sized and small US companies. Inside, you will find companies in three areas. Semiconductor companies like Nvidia, companies that sell technology services and software like Adobe or Cisco Systems, as well as manufacturers of equipment like Apple and Microsoft. VGT uses a passively managed full replication strategy to track the performance of the MSCI US Investable Market Index Information Technology 25-50. This index is made up of stocks from large, mid-sized and small US companies in the information technology sector. And thanks to this, you get not only the big names of tech, but also small tech unicorns, some of which may grow to become the next Apple or Nvidia in the future. XLK tracks the technology select sector index, including tech companies from the S&P 500 index. In case you don't know, XLK is one of the 11 select sector ETFs from State Street Global Advisors. So basically, SPDR divides the 500 companies of the S&P 500 into 11 sectors and offers an ETF for each one of them. We have communication services with XLC, consumer discretionary with XLY, consumer staples with XLP, and so on. And one of them is technology with XLK. This means that XLK strategy is pretty simple and selects all technology companies from the S&P 500. For this reason, considering that VGT is slightly more sophisticated and includes also small and mid-cap companies, I'm going to give here 8 points to VGT and 6 points to XLK. The second aspect is the expense ratio, namely the fees that you're going to pay on your portfolio every year as a percentage of your wealth. VGT has an expense ratio of 0.1% while XLK is slightly cheaper with 0.09%. So I'm gonna keep it short here because they have pretty similar values and XLK is a little bit cheaper. So I'm gonna give here six points to VGT and eight points to XLK, bringing both ETFs to 14 points. The third aspect is going to be the risk, like the risk of making a bad investment by subscribing to my channel. That is zero, right? Zero costs, useful information, try it out. Click the subscribe button, and you'll feel better, and I'll feel better too. Now, VGT and XLK are both risk ETFs, obviously, because they are solely focused on technology, which, as good as it is, it's not going to be great forever. This here is a really painful graph to see as soon as you understand what this is about. This graph represents the price ranking ratio of the technology sector and the benchmark used is XLK, since it represents the tech sector within the S&P 500. At the time of recording, end of August 2024, the P ratio is 41.52, except for now, the value went over 40 only in the year 2000. And what happened next? The whole market crash started the worst decade of the last century, with the technology sector falling down 80% and not getting back to the same value until over 15 years later. So. If you think of investing heavily in the tech sector now only because it was the best sector in the last 10 years, well, think again. I always try to be cautious and give my viewers a full picture instead of just riding the wave of the new trends. So if you appreciate this, a like to this video would be the best way to show it and it would be really helpful. Now, since VGT also includes mid and small cap companies, I consider VGT less risky than XLK because smaller companies are, indeed, undervalued compared to large cap. For this reason, I'm gonna give here five points to VGT and four points to XLK, bringing VGT to 19 points and XLK to 18. Point number four is diversification. VGT contains 318 holdings, while XLK, 67. VGT includes all tech companies of the American stock market, while XLK, only the ones 
with large market capitalization. Using ETFRC.com, we can check the overlap between these two ETFs. 22.4% of VGT's holdings is also included in XLK, and 100% of XLK's portfolio is included also in VGT. I think I can safely say that VGT is more diversified than XLK. And considering the current market environment, with large cap tech companies at an average price to earning ratio of over 40x. I can only suggest you not to put all your money into large cap tech stocks. So for this reason, when it comes to diversification, VGT is a clear winner with seven points and XLK gets five points, bringing VGT to 26 and XLK to 23 points. Aspect number five are the holdings. The top 10 holdings of VGT weighed 61.07%, while the top 10 holdings of XLK weighed 65.88%. And the holdings are pretty much the same, but in a different order. For example, the main holding in VGT is Apple, while in XLK is Nvidia. This is due to the fact that VGT weights the holdings based on their market value, while XLK uses a so-called modified market capitalization methodology. This allows XLK to put more weight on NVIDIA, which had a great couple of years lately and definitely contributed to a better performance of XLK. The sector breakdown for VGT is more colorful than for XLK, including companies in commercial services, transportation, health technology and process industries, even though in small proportion, of course, and as we've seen before, also the market cap breakdown looks better on VGT because of the inclusion of mid and small cap. I punished XLK enough already for diversification, so when it comes to holdings, I'm just gonna consider the fact that VGT is purely market cap weighted, which in my opinion is a finer strategy than overweighting overperforming stocks like Nvidia. And for this reason, I'm gonna give eight points to VGT and seven points to XLK, bringing VGT to a total of 34 points and XLK to 30 points. Let's move on now to the last and probably the most interesting aspect, which is the performance. We're gonna analyze here past performance, but I'm also gonna tell you what I think is going to happen to both ETFs in the future. By the way, past performance is not a guarantee of future results. I hope you know that. Obviously, I can't present future data to you because if I could read the future right now, my friends, my portfolio would have four or five zeros more than what it currently has, but uh, this is another story. Year to date, VGT performed better with 20.28% versus 16.75% of XLK. In the last five years, instead, XLK was the winner with 200.38% against 188.07% of VGT. 10 years, VGT wins again with 541.76% against 535.44%. So, $10,000 invested in these two ETFs would have made you $64,100 with VGT and $63,500 with XLK. That translates to an average annual return of over 20% for both ETFs. Many times in my channel, I talk about QQQ, the Invesco QQQ Trust Series 1 ETF. You probably all know how loved this ETF is, and it's curious to know that both ETFs beat QQQ in the last 10 years by over 100% difference, as you can see here. So, the fact that QQQ grew with an average of 18% per year in the last 10 years, in VGT and XLK with around 20%, only 2% more, actually causes your wealth over 10 years to grow around 25% more. That is why we're investing, both when it comes to performance and to fees, a little difference in an annual value is actually important because it creates a big difference in the long term. So even when it comes to performance, VGT wins. So I'm gonna give here 10 points to VGT because it really crashed it and nine to XLK, making VGT the winner with 44 points against 39 of XLK. Guys, technology is good and great and AI is gonna become a bigger and bigger thing in the future, whatever you want to believe. That is true. I also believe technology will move the stock market and our lives in the years to come, but market data doesn't lie. If the price to earning ratio is so high right now, you can't ignore it. It means that the real earnings that the companies are delivering is actually much lower than the price of the stock. In other words, way too much future expectation is priced in in the current market valuation. And this is never a good thing. No wonder great investors like Warren Buffett are selling out shares of great companies like Apple and building cash reserves. Sure, they also want to profit from a capital gain tax that right now 
taxes their gains at 21% and could be raised by a lot by the next administration. But a lower tax is not enough reason for somebody like Warren Buffett to sell so many stocks in one year and build one of the biggest cash reserves an investing company has ever had. So obviously, there is also the recognition that the current market valuation is way too high and a period of lower prices might be ahead of us. So what do you think? I'd love to know your thoughts, so drop a comment down below and if you enjoyed this video, drop a like and subscribe to the channel because it's free and you're gonna get new videos every week from the twin of Manu Ginobili. And apart from this, thank you all for watching, I wish you a great day and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!